Water is perhaps the single most essential thing to life, including human life. We are all basically ambulatory sacks of water <laughs> with just the right amount of dissolved minerals and salts that have to constantly transport ourselves somewhere where we can take in more water in order to keep holding the sack together every day. It's like we evolved up from single-celled organisms in the ocean, climbed out of the sea, and made sure to take our own water with us. But we have to find more as we go, even though it's been millions of years. And so it's not surprising that water is essential to many of our religious rituals that we, as ambulatory sacks of water, carry out. I think first of that common gesture of going to the bathroom to splash cold water on your face in a moment of grief, anger, or exhaustion. That small, gentle ritual of self-care that most of us have done, maybe not knowing at the time that it's something we share with almost every other human. And I think of how gestures like these can evolve into more consequential, formalized rituals. I think of the Jewish mikvah, that ritual immersion in water to restore purity that follows events, big life-changing events sometimes, like childbirth, conversion to the faith, or death. It's a symbolic washing away of the past life that came before that moment, emerging cleansed into a new state of being. Or I think of the Islamic equivalent, the guzal, the Shinto misogi, the Christian baptism. From a skeptic's point of view, the water might do nothing but briefly dampen you. But to a person of religious practice, practice even if not belief, the symbolism of the water is so very spiritually important. I think of the fellow chaplain who was once asked to perform an emergency baptism on a premature infant weighing two pounds, still in an incubator. The chaplain later told me that it felt like she was performing surgery. Her hands were in gloves. She had to use an eyedropper, an eyedropper. In that family's faith tradition, it was important that the water be flowing rather than a full immersion but all it took was one drop. I imagine everyone in the room leaning forward and holding their breath to see if the droplet would roll down the baby's tiny fuzzy head. I don't believe in sin, original or otherwise, but there is something so poignant, so very human about the care that went into making sure nothing impure from this world would attach itself to this perfect, tiny creature who was here even so briefly. I think of the sacred waters of the Ganges River, which symbolically carry away the sins of the bather and is considered pure and spiritually purifying. No one in India is under the impression that pollution is not real. Science exists there too, but the religious and spiritual significance of the water is also real. As a practice, when I come to a new place of significance for me, I like to touch the water, especially if I'm traveling across one of life's thresholds. I make sure to go down to the edge of the lake or the river and touch the water. When I drove from New Jersey to Oregon in 2016, and I finally reached Odell Lake, some of you have been there, after two weeks of driving, visiting, exploring, knowing that I was now just a few hours from my new home and new life, I got out of the car and walked into the lake in my clothes. 
there were other people there. <laughs> but it was a self-baptism at the edge of my new life here. And subsequent news reports of toxic algae blooms <laughs> and dangerous outbreaks of bacteria which periodically strike the lake as life does what life does, no matter how small or toxic. <laughs> Those periodic reports have not lessened the significance of that day for me. How I felt made new. How I felt that I had crossed a threshold now. Our rituals around water reaffirm our basic needs as creatures, as sacks of water, yes. Creatures to be sustained, to be cleansed, to start over, to be held afloat. In many traditions, especially earth-centered ones, the rains are either a gift from the gods or praise the gods in their very falling. I think we each have an equal right to water as living creatures dependent on it. And now, in 2019, now that we as a species have figured out ways to keep water clean and safe, ways to distribute it to everyone, we each have an equal and common right to that technology, too. We have a spiritual right to water. One day a year, as Unitarian Universalists, we come together for the ritual of pouring the water of our lives together in common. May we be reminded today of our most basic needs and those of our fellow creatures as we honor all that is our lives here on Earth. I've been tasked today with talking with you all about playfulness and play and how that ties into water. And so this seems like a good transition moment to um, invite anyone who wants to, to head to the back of the sanctuary to create rain sticks um, that we'll be using at a later time in the service, um, in service to your, your play. <laughs> and the river runs. <laughs> I think that the universe really likes to play. Playfulness must be a driving force for what's going on around here. How else do you explain platypuses or elephants, orchids or Venus flytraps? Einstein is quoted as saying that play is the highest form of research, and I am coming to believe that he is correct. We play when we are relaxed enough to be curious, and that is where new ideas are born. We play when we are vulnerable enough to each other and can let down our guard, and that is when new synergies arise. We play when we don't know the answers and are willing to explore, pretend, and imagine together. And this carves a channel for new routes for our future endeavors. We're celebrating the waters of our lives today, and I have had cause to consider these with rich intensity as I have been participating in the clinical pastoral education program at the local hospital. I've been allowed to dip into moments of other people's lives when they are at their most vulnerable, most hurt, most dependent. And I am there at times when play is the furthest thing from their hearts and minds. What they want is answers, protection, results. And yet, paradoxically, that thread of play, joyfulness, laughter, and fun runs through all of existence, even in the gatherings of loved ones at bedsides, as people share stories and memories of those they love. We recall the moments of play and fun because these moments stand out as times of pure joy and pure aliveness. What comes to me over and over in this process is the humbling gratitude I feel for being invited in in this way, and the richness, brightness, and clarity that these experiences are bringing to my own daily life. I was at the ocean recently with a dear friend. 
We walked along the shore with our shoes off and our pants rolled up and ran away from the waves when they came in fast and high and talked about our lives and our loves and our children and our hopes for the future. We gave our cares to the water in a precursor to this morning's events and had a day where we didn't have to be anywhere and it didn't matter what time it was and there was no one relying us on us to do anything. We just got to play. I'm so grateful for that. I stumbled across an explanation on the internet um, that said we play at heart because it's fun. And isn't that the truth? You can do a lot of pretty excellent things on the internet and recently my favorite has been to search Instagram for photos of animals playing together. <laughs> I've also been looking at really elaborately decorated cakes. <laughs> I love that frivolity, it just makes me so happy. <laughs> but these videos of animals playing together in all kinds of situations are just absolutely wonderful. Have you seen the one where there are ducklings climbing up a slide and then sliding back down it? <laughs> they do it over and over and over again, it's so dear. Um, or how about the one where there's a parakeet and a squirrel and they're playing peek peekaboo with each other, like poking their heads around the sides. <laughs> and then this other one that came up the other day that was a favorite for me, it was a dog swimming in this turquoise blue ocean and there was a dolphin leaping around him and like <laughs> making dolphin noises. It was so cute and so wonderful and it makes your heart so happy to see what play can do. We play because it's fun. Playfulness and laughter lubricate our soul. They birth creativity and allow us to carry on with hope and good cheer against all odds. These things aren't at all practical to the untrained eye, but they are absolutely essential in sustaining ourselves along the way. The waters that trickle, burble, leap, and dance reflect for me the delight that runs through our lives moving us along a trajectory that will eventually lead to an end, bringing us to the ocean, to that field of all being. It is no coincidence that our bodies are made up of the same stuff that responds to the movements of the moon, that reaches for the heavens, that sustains all life on this planet. We are manifestations of creation's desire to express itself into being. The audacious, hopeful, playful, creative, impossible, caco cacophonous, silly, incredible truth of our being, and the ducklings, and the squirrels, and the parakeets, dogs, dolphins, all of this. What is it but an act of playfulness, and joy, and love? What can we do but delight in the waters of our lives, drink to our good health, and recall those delights for one another, when we are most in need. Drop by drop, line by stuttered line, a swell, a squall, soft mist, it hard, and everything in between, water, place of birth and rebirth, salt, stagnant, fresh, oil slicked, plastic ridden, pristine, pure, trickling, flowing, running, ebbing in and out, in and out, searching out, seeking out the place of instinctive return. Seas guided by the tug and pull of the moon, streams and lakes fed by mountain runoff and underwater springs. Water, it holds, it wraps round, it rocks, it settles, it soothes, in womb warmth, egg casings, shell, watch 
new life will emerge, echoing sea depths where thermal currents bubble forth. Waters teeming with life, waters so depraved, so deprived, so devastated, they hold no life. Water drips, it drops, it delights, it drenches. The cool of its wet on sweated skin, cracked lips, down parched throats, quenching, cleansing. The lift of salt waters that float the body in the interstitial place of weightlessness and gravitational pull granting a newfound freedom. The threat of undercurrents, the riptides that pull out and under between life and death without thought or malice. On rivers swelled and full, the thrash of rapids will take what it will into its hydraulic turbine without judgment or sentiment, yet still unforgiving. Water caught and twirled in hurricane wind swirls, moving across lands without intent, wreaking havoc, leaving swollen despair. Water dousing deserts, sweeping up dust and dirt, overfilling cracks and tendrils, creating sucking mud, flooding out whatever tender life was there. Water, harsh and full, soft and gentle, inviting, enticing, seductive, weightlessness, weightless, unresistant to the smallest hand that moves through it, weighted and heavy, crushing giants rendered infinitesimal before it. It sounds, sometimes a solo, sometimes a quartet, sometimes a symphony, water, on par with as necessary as the blood that pumps our veins from the seafloor rising, drop joining drops, becoming, wafting upward, mist and cloud, building, releasing, drop by particular drop, down, rain, sleet, fog, ice, hail, snow, water rejoining waters, an offering, a blessing, a grace, a mercy. Let us welcome the waters of our lives. Today we bring the waters of our lives to mix and mingle into the waters of community. We have four altars set up, three that you will go to, and each one represents a particular kind of water. We have the waters of grief, the waters of playfulness and laughter, the waters of cleansing and healing in the back, and in the center, the waters of life. At each altar, there is a pitcher and a bowl of water. And if you've brought your own water, like Kathleen Dillon, who's been keeping water since the ceremony in 1981, please feel free to add it. At the end, Katie and Sarah and I will take all those waters and pour them into the center, the waters of life. I will boil those waters within an inch of their own lives, and they will be saved for next year, but more importantly, for the times when we dedicate our children. It is that water that will be placed upon their heads. If you need someone to bring your water to a particular bowl, please raise your hand or ask somebody next to you to do so. Some of them will come and help you get there or take your water and add it to the bowl. You may add your water to any of the three bowls. All, none, 
whatever. In the back of the sanctuary, you might have noticed that our children are making rain sticks. But we also have some pre-made rain sticks, and you all are going to need them. So you have to have one. <laughs> By the end of the pouring of the waters, you can go back there and ignore the water and just decorate it. Again, if you need someone to bring one to you, please let us know. And Katie and Sarah and I will now read a brief meditation about each altar. And then after the readings, we will ask if you are willing and able to move toward the different altars to offer your own water. Playfulness, laughter, joy, togetherness. That thing that moves through us and helps us to connect. That fun. It is what, bur with, it is what lubricates our souls, births creativity, and allows us to carry on with hope and good cheer. Playfulness and laughter, they aren't practical, but they are so desperately needed in our lives. The altar at the back of the sanctuary represents the waters of cleansing and healing. This is the metaphoric exhale, the letting go of old wounds, of heartbreaks, of assumptions, so that we can move cleanly, joyfully, and optimistically toward the next leg of the journey. Grief. That thing that none of us can elude. It weaves itself through human community. We live with the awareness that everyone we love, everyone we hold dear, will die, as will we. And we can't predict, predict how or when. With this awareness comes the capacity to treat one another with great tenderness and compassion. And so we share our grief to build these capacities and to affirm that grief is survivable. Let the pouring of the waters begin. <laughs> 